did angels exist prior to Genesis creation? I assume so. Uh, it, it is fine to assume so. And it's also equally fine to assume that angels did not exist prior to creation. Here's the reason why both are fine. There's, the Bible says that, excuse me, that these heavenly hosts, these morning stars that they, that they gave, um, that they shouted at the foundation of the earth. Now, the question is, is that to say that they were there when it happened or because of it? It can be taken either or, but I don't have a problem if you take it as though uh, they were there when the earth was created. But also, the question is, all throughout that time, what were they there for? What did they do before? Now, this is just us speculating because the Bible does not give a whole lot of detail and information about angels. What we do know is that one, they are minist they're ministering servants. They are they serve obviously God on behalf of us. They serve for those who are saved. But there are those those other angels who have left their abode, who fell, and are now forever condemned. However. Does the Bible specifically say conclusively that they were there before creation or after creation? We don't know because it lends to another question, which is when when did Satan and other demons fall? Did they fall before creation or after creation? Now that I would I would probably lean towards angels were probably created before creation, but then the fall of angels, the fall of Satan, and so forth happened after um, after the six day creation account, the reason is because God looked at everything and said that it is good. It'd be kind of hard knowing the kind of God that we have, that he would look at sin, especially the, the kind of sin that Satan is, and then still look at that, look at him, look around him, look over and above and around him and these other demonic creatures and say that it is good. I would, I would now, by the way, there is no passage to stipulate one way or the other. So you cannot dogmatically say that either one of these events happened just the way that I'm saying, or just the way you say, it. you can just say, like you said, I assume so, and then leave it at that, because neither of those things are all that pertinent to our walk. And Cephas Rock just asked a question. I should have, I should have saw. I didn't see that question, but but he asked a question before um, I started answering. I didn't see it, but yeah, that's how that's how you know. In incidentally, speaking about angels, but more particularly about fallen angels, about demons, we speak so much about them. However, the Bible speaks so little about them. The Bible mentions demons, but the Bible doesn't spend a whole lot of time talking about demons. As a matter of fact, uh, the Bible spends more time talking about godly things, things that are towards him uh, or our own sin, but not about demons. They've always existed, but the Bible is not all that concerned about you being concerned about demons. So I would say we should be proportional in our attention towards demons, commensurate with how the Bible is, meaning this. If the Bible, and I don't know what percentage, maybe we'll have to look it up one time, one day and see how much, what percentage the Bible gives to demons uh, and the devil and the enemy. But let's just say it's 2%. Let's say it's 4%. Let's say it's 5%. Well, then that's the case. And then, then give 4% or 5% of your time uh, to thinking about them then. And, but give the rest of it to, to God, to your walk and so forth. Meaning God doesn't seem to be overly concerned about you being concerned about demons. Uh, and so I think that there's this infatuation with them unnecessarily so it's a it's an unnatural following and desire to watch and see what the demonic world is doing amen also about demons here's something else that you ought to know about demons and i don't know why we don't do this enough especially those people who believe uh who, who believe that we are inundated with demonic forces and so forth and that uh, everybody has a demon. This is a demon. That's a demon. There are so many people that talk about demons, but here's the truth. Go in the Bible and look at what people with demons look like. When you look and see what people with demons look like in the Bible, everybody, non-believers and believers, Jew and Gentile knew that the person had a demon. They brought people with demons to Jesus. How do they do so? Because they knew they had demons. In other words, they didn't act up on command. They didn't demonize or possess or oppress or what have you. They didn't demonize a person, get in their car, drive to church, pay their... Of course, you ever notice that when a demon manifests with these people, they manifest after the tithes and offering. And I think that offering is not biblical, but still. I mean, tithes are not biblical, but still. They don't manifest until after money is given, after they talk about someone selling their books. They don't manifest until after the, the, the preaching. They don't manifest until after the very end. And then they show up. 
But in the Bible, when a person had a demon, that person acted like a demon all of the time. Think about Legion. All of the time, he acted this way. Think about the little boy who would throw himself in the fire, uh, falling over and so forth. He always acted that way. The woman who was double over, doubled over, she always acted that way. That's how demons are. Demons don't take a break. Demons don't get tired. Demons don't, don't have an inhaler. They don't need oxygen. They don't get tired. So therefore, we act as though they do, and we they only act up in the appropriate setting. This is how you know that the demons that they're talking of these are not easy. It's sad when you got to, when you have to find biblical demons, right? The demons that look like they look in the Bible and the demons that you have aren't really demons. And your demons are nice. Your demons are well-mannered. Your demons aren't fighting. Your demons aren't cussing. Your demons aren't going around shooting folks. I'm not advocating folks be shot, but my point is there's a world full of people out there doing all of these things, but the demons that are with these Christians, they are the tamest demons. Maybe the demons that these Christians have are the kind of demons that the world needs, and then maybe the world would, would tamp down a little bit. That's how you know their demons are fraudulent, which means their ministry of casting them out is just as fraudulent. Amen.